Mackey's text, as Brother Gene said, is going to be found in 2 Corinthians 4, 6. And this is how it reads. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That sounds good, doesn't it, brethren? <laughs> so the sound of hope, it's confirming, confirming to our faith. <clears throat> God established in the very beginning the power of his word when he said, let there be light, and there wasn't light. No, there was light. It came. God said, let there be light, and there was light. <clears throat> the focus in this passage, and quite frankly throughout the entire scriptures and our lives, is God. He is the focus. <clears throat> God is the potter, and we are the clay. He is the creator, and we are the created. He is the one and the only one that reveals his glory. He determines what is known of him, how much is known of him, and who knows him. His son, Jesus, said this, All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. <clears throat> had, God not, had God not commanded the light to shine out of darkness and to shine into our hearts, Mankind would know absolutely nothing about the knowledge of God, his ways, anything else pertaining of God or God himself. God would still be veiled. We would know nothing of him. Before the Lord commanded the light to shine, our hearts were as the earth at the beginning of creation. And this is what was said. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Our understanding was darkened. We were alienated from the life of God through our ignorance. We were ignorant of God because of the blindness of our heart. This is why we, we needed this light to be shined into our heart. Darkness is not where God is, and he does not intend for his people to abide there. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all, neither is there even a shadow of turning in him. And darkness, if you are in darkness, it presumes that you are separated from God. God was not willing to leave his creation in the dark, and we know that God is focused. He didn't just shine the light randomly. He shined it in our hearts. We had to have a heart like God. Our heart had to have be illuminated. Our hearts were the center of darkness. Just as the shepherds were keeping their flocks by night, the night that Jesus was born, the Lord pierced through the darkness, just like he did in our heart. He, appear, he pierced through the darkness, and he commanded that the light to be shine. And we know, because of the testimony of the shepherds, that the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Amen. There was no question that this was God. This was He was the one that had determined this. <clears throat> when light comes, darkness must flee away. Amen. How <clears throat> were we to know that the Lord has shined the light out of darkness? How do we know this? Because we have the knowledge of the God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It is by knowing Christ Jesus and knowing that he is the light of life. The closer we walk with Christ the greater the light is because he is light mm -hmm. and the clearer our understanding of the things of God and God himself become. And we see this in the Psalm when Asaph was writing. So he didn't see things quite right. There was some darkness whenever he was beholding the wicked and how well they, they prospered and how, <coughs> how, how firm really he thought that their step was. But what happened when he drew near to God his vision was cleared. The light was shown that their feet were in slippery places. So the closer we are to Christ, the clearer things become. Amen. If you have believed on the gospel of Christ, then the Lord has commanded the light to shine in your heart in order that you might know him. 
If you love righteousness and you hate iniquity, the light of God has been shown in your heart. If sin hurts you, if it bothers you, the light has come and it has been shed abroad in your heart. If you think like God thinks, then the light has come to your heart. The Lord has commanded it. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Having our hearts illumined by the Lord is not a one-time event. It doesn't happen once and then it's done. God desires to be known, and as he is known through the one that he ordained as the light. As we look intently at the face of our Savior, we will see God. We will see the Father. So I want to leave you with these three promises that David, before Christ came, wrote these things. But now looking back in the day of salvation in which we live, our heart takes great delight in these promises. David said, Unto the upright there ariseth light in darkness. Amen. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. We'll see him. We'll see God, and we won't want to flee from him. This is an important aspect to see about the light being shined into our hearts. Before when God was on the earth, people didn't want to be near him. They wanted him to stop speaking, and they fled. They were afraid. But when the true light comes, we want him more. We will see the light of his countenance. Light is sown for the righteous. It's sown for the righteous. And gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness.